Welcome back to part two on how to make a foam helmet here on Evil Ted Channel. I think about this, I think it'd be nice to have a kind of like a brow on it, like a heavier piece that sits out here. So what I like to do with is take my patterns and draw my line. See right there, I'm gonna draw this guy. I'm gonna trace this pattern like so. And trace like so. And match that angle. See? Alright. And since we know this is my uh, my center, that's gonna be our my center where we're gonna bend it. So what I do is take this way on the ruler, crease my pizza. And it's perfectly square. Fold it in half. And since it's paper, you can kind of play with it, see what you have. Because I have this and this, so let's see we go up like uh, something like this. Take your exacto blade, keep it folded in half, like so. So when you do this, you make an exact duplicate of your pattern. Cutting. My angle here. Okay, there it is. Now we have our pattern. 16 inch uh, black L200. But I like it because it's thinner. This is going to add a little bit of detail in my helmet. So, what I'm going to do here, line this guy up. All right, now that we have this transferred over, this is where this comes in handy. I have to get my trusty uh, mat knife and my sharpener. Because when I cut this out, I want to I want to do a little bit of a bevel to it. All right, now we have our blade all sharp. Ready? Mm -hmm. We're ready to go. See do that and stop. Up around and start from this edge as well too. Once again, my stopping points in there. I was trying to make a mark so I know where it's at. Mm -hmm. And now, here we go again. There we go. Okay. Short bevel cut. Now, if you look at it, you can see the 45 now. So, there we go. Take a sharpie. So I can kind of figure out where I want to put my glue. Let's take this on like so. Line it up. Stick it down this guy. Edge. There you go. See? Bam. All ready. Okay, the more I look at this helmet, I like it, but the edges on the front of this are a bit square, a bit flat. And so I figured I'd like to put a bevel on them. I'm trying to figure out where my, uh, my, my bevel is going to fall, like about there, see, you can see it. So I make a mark with my Sharpie, I'm going to do my line, just flush. So what this is going to do is going to give me a guideline, so when I'm cutting with my telescoping mat knife, I don't waver, see, just like that. And as I cut with my knife, I see the angle and I see this the, the sharpie edge and I just follow that. Okay, voila. See now, get a little more of a bevel to it. So let's sand it out. Okay, to make more, um, we're still once again adding more detail patterns. I took this pattern from my side of this uh, to make, trace it out, and it came about something interesting. I traced it on doing the piece of paper, cut out, and made this pattern I like. So, with this, take a look at where it's going to fall. Like so, I lay it up. Okay, now I get the curve. I always like to take the curves on the band saw. That's good for that. You can still do it. But for circles, big circles like this, I have here, you use an X-Acto blade, but I have some smaller ones. There's a little trick I like to do. 
with the brass tube. I have a big brass tube here. What I do is I put a little bit of edge on it. But inside with an exacto blade, I kind of skin the inside of the brass tube blade to make it sharp. So you do it like a little bit of an angle on the brass tube. It gives a little bit of an edge to it. Which hold over your mark. Like so. And you kind of saw back and forth. All the way to the floor and keep going back and forth, back and forth. See, voila. It's a nice, nice clean hole. And for my pattern, I'm going to do a bunch of these. As a matter of fact, you can keep these because these make good detail as well, too. So, like that. Line it up. Voila. Okay. Now, for the big hole, since I have a brass tube that big, sometimes you can do that, but I just kind of take an exacto blade very carefully, nice and sharp. There we go. Voila. See? Got both my pieces cut. Got my right and my left. Now to glue them on. Okay, here we are back again. I did this pattern over here, and I realized as I was looking at this, it seems kind of like I have this detail. I lied, I got this here, but now I feel like something's missing up here. Um, so I went ahead and did one of my pre-existing patterns of this guy, used it to uh, gauge, and I made this pattern, paper pattern. Once again, I like the holes a lot. I did some here, but I thought there were too many, so I kind of narrowed it down, so I did three holes. So now, I did that, as you can see, I probably applied, so now I add a little bit more detail to it. So, I'm going to go ahead and stick this guy on. All right, for detail, it's a little trick that my friend Robert Miller taught me. And what you do is you need a Dremel with a sanding drum on it. And uh, turn to high speed. Hold it steady. There you go. This is a really quick, easy way to making rivets and stuff. Um, I usually sometimes cut add pieces on, but this is also another technique. But um, this always comes in really handy. And once again, this was a great technique. Uh, but my buddy Robert Miller came with this concept, and uh, it's come in very handy. So thanks, Robert. See? Voila. You can see little details on it. Okay. Here we go. Now, just when you thought we were done, <laughs> I was digging around my shop and I found some uh, those little uh, neoprene uh, uh, flexible um, tubing. This is like a uh, rubber tubing, really thin. And I want to put a little bit of a little piping on the inside of this helmet. I think it would be great. Just a little, little bead in here. So, I'm going to glue this inside. I like to put it on, not just on the edge, but I want to put it on the whole seam. So it's good to have it on there, just a reassurance there. I always find it difficult to glue neoprene tubing. So what I usually do is I take a scrap piece of foam like I have right here, and I'm going to pin it. So I take the guy, so take a straight pin, just poke the edge, see? right down to the other end, and pin the side as well. See? There you go. Which now, it'll stay on here so you can just put the contact adhesive on. And here we go. I'll put this very carefully on the inside of my seam. Just right on the edge. Glue side down. Right on the border. And I always want to make sure to hold it so it doesn't stick to itself. So you got to be very careful. Tuck on these corners. Okay, I am done. I've got all the pieces I want to put on it. I got my little trim piece. I know it was a last minute thing. Once again, that's not essential. If you don't have it, you don't have to do it. But I like putting, you know, any additional pieces I can add to it that add a little bit more detail. I like doing that. But anyway, it is officially done. Ta -da. Now I'm saying, what's next is uh, coating and painting. You can use plastic dip latex. And I finally realized it's a whole other tutorial in itself. So. Come back next time. And how to keep up on me is subscribe below. Please subscribe to the Evil Ted channel. And I have a fountain of information and more things I want to share with you. So please subscribe. And I'll catch you next time on the Evil Ted channel.